Hi, I'm Emma, CEO and co-founder of Silk Red, and today I'm here with Anne, uh, the founder and owner of Anne Louise Boutique. Hello, Anne. How are you? Hi. No, very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's very exciting. So, Anne's brand, how long have you been going for, Anne, now? Well, we started in May 2019, so just over a year we started. Um, oh, it has been a hell of a year, absolutely. No, I mean, what a time to start. I know, we've really um, <laughs> had more milestones um, in this year, and I feel like if we can get through to 2020, we can pretty much get through anything. But yeah, we started in May 2019. We actually started to wholesale from other brands because we are, was going to be just a boutique. And um, we quickly realized, well, for myself, that the quality and the sizing was pretty much not what I wanted to buy from. And um, just spent long and hard finding a supplier and um, finding a few suppliers actually that we wanted to work with and that could really demonstrate what we wanted in put our, well, our heart and soul into our designs and someone to bring that piece to life. So we actually brought our first pieces out. It took us a while to obviously design and make them and bring the samples in and get the right fit in and size and fabrication. And then um, we went ahead with that December 2019. Um, so I, and then we cleared the website of all the wholesale stuff and it was just our brand. I'd love to know a little bit more about that. Like you said that you couldn't, you couldn't quite get what you wanted to buy yourself. Really, like your, your decision was driven from you know, something that you thought saw was missing and something that you wanted to see. I started it with my mum my mum as well. So my mother is involved in this process. She's more of the accounts now, but there's two generations involved in this brand. It's myself, I'm in my 30s, and then my mother being in her 50s. I want women to be able to go to work or just quickly change and maybe go to a baby shower or a party. And I really wanted that to show within our designs, sort of a ready to wear designs where it can pretty much cover all occasions. And I was really lucky to start with um, the CEO of Good America, oh. um, Chloe Kardashian. Um, I contacted her and said, I'm starting my own brand. And I wondered um, if you could give me any advice. And she was incredible and she uh, told me absolutely everything it's the best advice i've ever received in my lifetime regarding a career it's great to have her as a mentor and i still have her as a mentor what was the best piece of advice that she gave you on an aspect if you are setting up your own business it's interesting to establish the customer kind of know what they what you want to give them basically and then find the piece that you think is the best for them and then keep changing it change the trims change the color because yeah. they have their staple leggings and yeah. then they've got on jeans and then they've gone out onto these huge there's so many you can buy now so many variety of jeans and leggings and so on getting to know your customer she said is the most important thing oh right and you obviously went into this as well like thinking about you as the customer who loves shopping yeah. and you couldn't find what you wanted no and i think it's she always asked me to t ask my customers so we always make sure we ask on our instagram um because that's our best form of uh, communication we find at the moment and in a short space of time like what you yeah. what you've done is really incredible and, and 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 almost certainly like inspiring for people who'd be wanting to start their own fashion brand with the um person emma that you saw out over in the states you think it, do you think it's important to have mentors Oh, 100%. I think if you can grab a mentor, like I wish I could talk to more people in retail, actually. Um, I'm lucky that's what my first career at 15 was in retail at o Oasis and Debenhams. And I learned a lot from that, what you would put on the, on the mannequin or what people would like to see in each season. You really do learn a lot. But if you're starting off your own brand, really kind of look what's out there and look what's doing really well. And then kind of put your eye into it, what you would like, I think, and then just change it around. I mean, the hardest thing is to find a supplier, but they can be found. And then when you've got one that's amazing, just hang on to them because you want someone to put your brand to life. That's it. And and, uh, building those relationships early on is, yeah. is, is so important, yeah. isn't it? You have to tell me, what's it like working with your mum? 
<laughs> it's quite uh no we get along really well definitely but there are moments i suppose like any business partner but it's really it is good because we do have a different eye for things and definitely we wouldn't agree on something she'd be like no do not bring that out that's awful or i heard someone say earlier that um in their business they had positive disagreements which i thought was such a good way that is literally it's, it's I'm describing it. <laughs> it is i think those tensions are quite important um when you're building when you're building a business because yeah. you know it I, like i i found like even in with silk thread you know and we have like you know very heated debates about like many different things and yeah i think you know positive disagreements about the best way to do things Definitely. And, and i and i think what you get to in the end is that you do get to like the best result which you is quite, it's, it's quite it's quite good it's frustrating at the time but it's quite yeah. good to go through to go through that my process. idea what we started with i'll have to persuade her is what we usually have to go with that's it isn't it and we, yeah <laughs> going back to your career in um in retail and just sort of like way back in the beginning so how did you get so how did you get started like where where did you know how how old were you when you went into retail like what was your first job like and what did what did what did the day look like when Anne first started I was 16 when I got my first job in retail <laughs> um again at Oasis and Debenhams and my career path hasn't always been insurance so again I would say if you are setting up your own brand or you want to go into retail you don't have to have the background in it at all yeah. um I then went into insurance. It's a completely different sector um, in the city. I mean, it couldn't be far further from what I'm doing right now. Um, but I always loved fashion. And one thing Emma said to me, um, Emma Creed, at CEO of Good America, sorry. She said, I can see that you've got this really good eye for fashion yeah. and um, designs. And she said, you just need to showcase that. And I've just learned in the space of a year um, how to use CAD systems and anything I can get my hands on to really draw. I mean, my drawing's atrocious. <laughs> so again, I wouldn't say that you need to draw. Um, but if you can put a pen to paper and then try and bring that to life with the patterns that you want and the colours, then there's you will find a way to demonstrate that. And, um, you'll, and you'll find yeah, out before the other things happen as well. Like nobody goes into starting a business being, you know, completely you know it being skilled in like lots all the different disciplines needed to make right. business, business work you know that that's i mean i'm sure that does happen sometimes but most business owners that i've met like they've they've you know they've known one thing and they've had a clear vision for what they wanted and what they wanted to put into the world yeah. through like to use your word earlier like determination they yeah. just they just go in they just go in you know make it happen so if it's teaching yourself how to use like CAD designs and and things like yeah. that you know it's, it's exciting it is exciting in my 30s it? I'm learning all these new things but you should always learn always keep learning how long did that take you from starting your business to right there's my notice I'm out of here <laughs> I, mean, I again my mother I was always on the book so it's always a very cautious matter to yeah. do that um, and I've always been in a very steady job where I have a paycheck every month and so on. So it was a huge decision that I had to make for my, it was actually very scary. I bet. The going into the office going, I'm so sorry, I've got to hand my notice in. But it took me about six months. So you, you walked in and said, hi, Anne. And you said, oh, okay, so I'm leaving to go start my own fashion brand. What was their reaction? I, I think they were in shock. <laughs> they were like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I know it's going to be okay. Which was the hardest part, because I was doing it on the side as a hobby, but it was, it was sort of interjecting into my day-to-day -day yeah. corporate life, which, you know, is very hard. So I'd go to the post office just before 8 a.m. to then start my corporate job at 9 a.m. So I was really having to do everything strategically. But um, there was points where the, the girls in the office would be looking at the Daily Mail and addresses would be in the Daily Mail. And there was a point where they were in there pretty much solidly, quite weekly. Yeah. And 
<laughs> they're all be looking at the Daily Mail and I'd be like, oh no, don't click on that post with Fogue Williams because my dress is going to be on there and then it's going to pin to Anne Louise Boutique. And I was like getting really nervous. Oh, so they didn't know that that was... No, you. no one knew. I had to be very strategic and very discreet um, because I, I really... you. When, I think when you start something, you always... For me, I really wanted to do well. Really wanted it to do well. But you always have that, you know, bit in the back of your mind saying this is just a hobby, this isn't going to go so far. I think all my friends were literally like, just a hobby, not yeah. going to go anywhere. And then I told them I quit my job as mum, they were like, really? I was like, yeah, it's all going to be okay. It's amazing, really. Like, I, I really love that story. So do you think there was a part of you in the sort of the back, in the back of your mind where you were thinking, I don't want to tell people that it's mine because then that would be me putting myself out there? And then yeah. you earn obviously that pressure on, on you, right? Yeah, that again, it had my name on it as well. So Anne Louise, so it's really difficult as well. <laughs> but I think it's difficult to, you don't want people to know too much because you're scared where you're going with it. You're not quite yeah. sure. And then you, I was more scared about if it doesn't go ahead and it doesn't go to plan, then I have to go back into insurance. And that was a huge... That's quite a scary thought to me. It must have been such hard work. I mean, running everything down to the post office eight in the morning. Oh, it's all, yeah. And then, yeah. And then if I forget one or some, if I had orders that tried to come in at lunch, I try, I literally would wrap them up in the car on my <laughs> lunch break and then go straight into the Royal Mount. It was just, I would have to be so strategic with it. And I'd be like, this is my best seller. I'm going to take this to work today with me and just in case I get some orders for it. Because you, you had a good feeling that by lunchtime an order would come in and then of course yeah. you, you want to get it out as quickly as possible. And then my partner, because um, all the stock was in our house, he like mm -hmm. run stuff down for me and we're quickly packing. He'd do the labels for me and it was, yeah, it was an absolute nightmare. It was all for me, it's about delivery for the customers. You want to make sure it gets to them on time. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't think anyone would know I want everyone to buy from our brands and know that it is, you know, you don't want it to look awful and we don't send it out to them in a timely manner. So I was really trying to concentrate and to get it all out on time. They're still stuck in your downstairs bathroom. No, we've now got an <laughs> office. It's all gone now. <laughs> yeah, all gone now, thankfully. Um, we've now got a, a unit that is actually, we've now overgrown already. We moved into that. Wow in March and we've now overgrown that um and we was really excited this year because we really wanted to hire people basically yeah. but because of Covid where it's so hit and miss um yeah. we wasn't we didn't want to put anyone in position where they feel like they can come in and then then it goes into lockdown again I really didn't want someone to ever feel like that so need to be in that position where I can hire people and build a team um yeah. whether whatever their hopes are um or what their dreams and their career dreams are i would love to help help them get there incredibly exciting and and yeah very you know similar to us when we first started building our team out like everybody got stuck in and got their hands dirty yeah that's it I always remember like this um this period of time where we get like water like delivered to the office i think we were about maybe like 20 people at this stage yeah we'd all like we'd all have to like run downstairs in the lift and then like bring yeah. the water up and it was like a big team effort <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, I, and i think i think back to that period of time and actually it was you know it was a really like happy and exciting time because everyone was all in it together um yeah. it did it, you know and it did very much feel like you know you can start um anywhere in the company and end up somewhere completely different and um, so it's, it's um i think i think that's going to be a very exciting time for you it would be really lovely to build a team um I really, it would have been great to have done it a bit more this year but Harder. yeah just couldn't take the up because then i didn't know if you had to close the office and then not and um yeah it's just but it'd be exciting next year i'm sure it'd be fine <laughs> hopefully <laughs> did you always want to have your own business yeah, yeah, definitely. By the age of 30, I, I think that's all, you hear a lot of people say that, but I 100% went into my own business. And the only option I could see for myself was clothes because I absolutely love shopping. It was just, every time I went into work, I had a little shop at lunchtime, 
definitely shopped in the evening. I was like, just want to, it'd be fantastic if I had my own clothing line because I could just wear my own line and save some money at least. So <laughs> I was honestly, That's a good motivation. I'm like the best consumer. I would never return anything. I just loved it. I'd just buy it and then that'd be great. But we've got a really lovely team as well in the manufacturing department and they just say, oh, can I keep this please? Because I absolutely love it. And I'm like, yes. 100%. So it's nice that everyone kind of likes the process and all the designs as well. Yeah, and I, I think being, I like <laughs> being passionate about, you know, what you're creating and what you're selling, like I think customers can can see can see that and sense that. And you know, if that's where, you know, as a brand like your passion has to be, you know, completely focused on on that really because yeah that that's that's kind of what it's all about what's been your toughest moment so far um well one of the toughest moments was making the leap I suppose from my corporate job into taking this on as a full business for myself just really want to get everything out there on time and it's just there's sometimes it's just not not impossible but it just doesn't go that go that way Every single step we've made in this business this year has been a extreme milestone for us. What do you know now that you wish you knew when you first started? There's a lot of the functionality when you start up a business. You learn day by day. And for me, if I knew just really quickly that you could actually get someone to collect your raw mail parcels or um, what website platform to use or where to buy your own packaging and logo and so on and trademarking. I could know all that quick, that sort of start up a business process just from the start. That would be great. Because, yeah, because that, that for me was all oh, you learn all that as you go and which is great, but it'd be great to just have those things to hand straight away. Again, that's why I think having a mentor who's done it, has been there and done it, can help. What do you love the most about having your own brand? The best part of having my own brand is when you go out and you actually see, catch someone in your clothing. Um, if you go to a restaurant, I literally, this happened to me in the summer and I went to a restaurant and I saw a girl in our um, Royal Heart blouse. Yeah. And I literally was like, oh my God, you're wearing my blouse. And she was like, oh yeah. And then she tagged me in it. And it was just so lovely to, oh, it's lovely. lovely to see people in the clothing. I like the brand to feel magical and seeing them wear it at an event is just, just makes my day completely. Amazing. Well, thank <laughs> you so much, Anne. It's been so thank lovely you. talking to you and hearing all thank about you. your story. I mean, it's just, I think it's just so incredible, like what you've built in such a short period of time and particularly uh, a huge amount of that time being one of the most difficult years to be in this business. So, Definitely. But you can do it. Anyone can do it. <laughs> so, well, congratulations to everything that you've done Thank so you. far and um, good luck for the next year. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for having me. Thank you.